Ahoy, fuckers! How you doing? Good to see you all. Barrett, lovely to see you here. Glad you could make it. At an ungodly time it is over there. Uh, Darius and Fenacil, uh, our premise. Skinny Seahorse, welcome. And Cisco Jose. Hello. And then to anyone else Twitch isn't letting me see yet. Great to see you all. Okay, so this time... That's a little dark on your side, as usual. Let's just see if I can go find the exposure and screw around with that a bit. Where's the, uh... Oh, let, let's start with the intro first, and then we'll start screwing around with code. Um, I was sent this really cool video that we're seeing here. Um, it was someone playing around with dissolve shaders, now, which is pretty neat. And I was asked to do something like this, which looked like a lot of fun, so I definitely want to try that. And we're going to, obviously we're not going to have things that look as nice uh, with our kind of little screw around setup that we've got. But we could definitely try and get some of this, like getting a line where things are disappearing. Um, having this kind of highlight on the edge, things like that. And then trying a couple of different patterns, playing with some noise and some ramps and stuff like this. Darius saying, AV okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, Pumpkin not here. Boo. Wherever he is, if you're watching the stream, hey man. Um, so yeah, this is cool. We want to give this a try. And that's about it, really. So let's start mucking around. I've set a few things up, though it's hard to see right now. So let me just go for... Um, there must be up here somewhere, one of the pipelines we have. The thing that sorts out the colors right before the end. Let's have a look. This is tone mapping up here. There is an exposure value, so let's bring that up. And let's set it up a bit and just see when things start to look a bit better over on your side. Yeah, that's a bit nicer. Now you see what's going on now. Cool, so we've got our little sphere. This is the guy that we're going to be making dissolve. Um, to get started, I've um, copied a couple of... I've copied, copied the pipeline that we're using to render this. Um, and I've copied it's the two GPU functions that make up the stages. So this is the vertex stage in case we need to muck around with it. And this is the fragment stage. Um, and it's got all the existing lighting stuff and stuff like this. So I'm going to try and not modify it too much. What we are going to mess around with is that... Um, ooh, what's that? Um, we can play with this and we have a form of transparency. So basically we're setting the... Um, W component, and then we've got some blending parameters saying use one minus alpha uh, for the blending. So if I just go to, where was it, things, we can see where it's drawing the ball. I've added a bit of extra code. Um, I've got some cull face setting stuff, which we'll get to soon. And we've got with blending here and some dissolve params, which are just defined here. So if I go and get those, we can see that we have a few things set up. It's the destination RGB is one minus the source alpha. So the color that's coming, we've got some colors written into a buffer already and we're writing more colors in. And so it takes one minus the source alpha and um, multiplies the destination by that. And then it takes um, the source times source alpha and then adds them together. So that kind of scales down the existing color and then we add up to, we have to, so the total is one, but yeah, sorry. Blending stuff we covered another time, uh, so I won't try and go too deep into that. But it's basic thing to know is we've got some blending params. Uh, we've set with blending, and now we're drawing some stuff, and we're calling our dissolve pipeline here. Um, all the rest of it is stuff we looked at before and is not too exciting for, for what we want to do. Um, now the basic thing, the first thing, um, thing that's actually... It, from my playing just before the stream going to cause some trouble straight away is that um, we want, basically want to set whether it's transparent or not by how far by some line across here um, so what I was thinking was we could use UVs so if we take um, this and we say we take the Y component of the UV um, we can see that it's fainter down here than it is up here. 
but that's not too useful. For what, what I'm going to do instead is put a step and say at 0.5, um, when this value is 0.5, we transition to 1. So it will be 0 until, it hit, until this value hits 0.5, and then the result of this function will become 1. So if I compile that, now we can see we've got half of the sphere. Got the top half. So it was... So um, y of uv down here must have been uh, less than 0.5. Got to here, transitioned to 0.5, and it went up to the top. Which sounds reasonable. Um, and so I'm going to invert this. So basically I want it to be 1 minus this, right? Oops. No, not that way around. Come on now. Yeah, something like that. But the problem with this, unfortunately, is... We're not drawing the inside. And I was pretty sure that was down to backface culling. That seemed like the most reasonable thing for it to be. Um, so I went and, what did I do? Oh yes, I went and in things, I stuck this set cull face to nil around the whole draw call. And it had no effect at all, which is really disturbing. Um, Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that means. So let's have a look. I've, uh, if I if I put a print statement out here, print uh, curl face, we can see that it's culling the back face. No, get rid of that. Now I put that print statement inside uh, with setf, and we can see that curl face is nil. So it is doing what it should be doing. And with setf, it's going to ensure that it's set back to its original value on the way out. Um, but still, nothing there. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So one thing could be that the stuff that's facing away from us is... Um... Oh, shit. Oh, no. So one of the things I thought is that the stuff that was facing away from us, coincidentally, all had a UV... Um... A, a Y UV that was less than 0.5. Didn't make any sense. but um, And thus it was getting culled. Um, so no, that, that wasn't it. And so we can we can go around and we can see it's the same. It's just the fact that that, that face is definitely getting... Oh, the back face isn't getting culled. My mistake. Oh, that's interesting. So, we end up with a fragment. Of course, we end up with a fragment. And that's being written into the depth buffer. So it's actually occluding things behind it. Ah, okay. So what I kind of want to do then is discard rather than a uh, set transparency. Hey, Erasus. I think I changed how I pronounce your name every week, but hello. Um, so there is some, obviously, all these things are getting drawn, but we've set the alpha value to zero, so they're being blended with the thing behind. Um, but that still writes it to the depth buffer. And because there's something, uh, it, when you've got two fragments and... Um, yeah, when you write two fragments in the same x, y position on the screen, um, they're going to check the depth buffer. And if they're further away than the depth buffer is, if they're a greater value than this in the depth buffer, it discards the pixel. So what, what I need to do instead is... Where are we now? Da -da 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 -dun. We need to take this and say when this equals... Um, one discard. That wasn't the one I wanted. Zero. Okay, there we go. So now we can see we're, we're now we're discarding all the ones that don't match our test, and now it would actually be fun to start moving that line. So it, uh, now we could say this is sign of I'm going to actually set this back to be solid all the time. Whoops. Oh, yeah. I need to give sign an argument. Now. 
Okay. So. It's not super nice, but it is working. Let's make sure it's never negative. Boom. Boom. There we go. Cool. So we've got our kind of vague dissolvey thing kind of going on. We'd like to perturb that line. Um, so it's not just straight. So um, basically we're going to just keep messing with um, with this value here. We can just add something to it. Um, and what we could do is just add something based on a noise function. So we've got a bunch of uh, noise functions in uh, Nineveh, which is kind of like a standard library of uh, GPU functions that we have available. So we should use something like that. Um, now, I wonder how the best way to do that is. There's probably some 1D noise functions in there. Let's go have a look. Now, unfortunately, I never got around to writing documentation for that. So we're just going to have to go in and look under noise and see what's there. So we'll take some Perlin noise. And there's no 1D noise, but there's a 2D noise, and we can just use one component of that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll call let's n be Perlin noise and we're going to pass in the x component of the UV and zero. Um, so it'll be, we're sampling on, along one line. That should do something. Um, and then, that's apparently happening already. Then we can do this. Let's just, oh no, wait a second. Du -du -du. Let's take this up here. Uh, v is this plus n. So we're taking our little boundary value and we're adding n to it. And we'll put v here. Ooh. And so we're getting some displacement, but there's, there's a, it's not very wibbly. Basically, we need, we need a higher frequency. So when we're sampling, instead of doing um, just x, which is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1, probably, um, let's just multiply it by 10. That's kind of cool. But the result value is between 0 and 1 as well, so it's having too big an effect. Um, so let's multiply the whole thing that we get back from here um, by something. Let's say 0 0.1. So we're scaling it down. And then we get something like this. And that's starting to look like a little more like the thing we wanted um, from the video. Now, it's kind of annoying that it's going all the way. Ah, no, it's kind of cool that it goes all the way down to the bottom. So we can keep going with this. Sister Jose, why not 3D noise? Um, if it was 3D noise, that would mean it's consistent across everything. Yes, we totally could do that. But, um, like, if we were sam we could sample from 3D noise, like, into a 3D noise thing um, based on the position of the line or maybe the position of the vertex, like the position of the fragment, for example. That could work. But at the moment, what I wanted was this effect to be static. And so it made sense just to do a, just to do one line and just do it as kind of the rim. But yeah, then we wouldn't have that uh, seam on the other side. So you're dead right there. Uh, Darius saying that was pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, then we could have the 3D noise moving over time. We can actually do, um, instead of this uh, component here being uh, zero, why not set it to, why not set it to time as well? And let's slow down that sine wave a bit more. And we can see this discontinuation here. This is the, the thing that uh, Darius is talking about fixing. Um, if we sampled from um, a 3D noise, we can make that continuous. But yeah, we're, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Suska Jose was, uh, sorry, uh, Darius was saying, that was pretty straightforward. Sorry, Suska Jose was giving the advice about the noise, and Darius was saying uh, that was pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a horrendously hard... Uh, technique. We're, we're doing some things that are probably a bit funky. I'm, I'm kind of interested in how they do their stuff. Like in that video, let's have a look. Like, there's some n nice kind of dissolvey edges, 
And we'll see, actually most of these are using a kind of a hard cutoff, which makes things easier. I mean, we could do it in two passes. Um, So maybe they're just doing dis discard. Because you, you kind of want like a, a slightly anti-aliased edge. So I want to do blending there. But when we do, do blending, as we saw before, um, we're still writing into the depth buffer. And therefore, uh, we're, we're discarding the, um, the fragments behind. Um, we probably could... Probably could screw with that so that doesn't happen. I guess that's the thing we need to find out how to do. We could also render the object twice. Once with um, front face culling and one with back face culling, and that will get our whole object. That might be worth doing actually, because that lets us do the blending as well. We could, yeah, for each transparent object, would render the back and then the front. We'll probably give that a go actually. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's let's have a play with um, the three D noise then. How should we do that? Um, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking there's any other way to deal with that continuation. I mean, we could sample, um, we could sample a circle in the 2D noise. That would also make it continuous. I kind of want to try that, actually. Um, yes, and then we could use, actually, then we could do the 3D thing to make it move in time. So let's, let's try that. Let's do, um... What am I thinking of? Do, do, do. Um, can we just get away with doing um, sine x and cos x uv? Am I being dumb? Yeah, I'm being dumb, aren't I? Why did my brain go right about the time that I need it to work? Yeah, that's going to be going between 0 and 1, which isn't going to give us our full um, period. So is the, um, what's the the full um, full cycle for sine? Is it pi? I can't remember. Whoops. Oh yeah, we're taking it. That's a double. Um, let's move this down to a new line and get rid of that warning, which is well, error, which is very helpful. Um, and we'll use pi f. I can't remember if it was pi or 2 pi or what it was. That's looking a bit better. But now, of course, we've, uh, we've lost our moving component because now we're using... Um, both of the uh, coordinates are being used to sample within the 2D uh, plane of noise. So let's just go and add a third component. And we get back our... Uh... Oh no, look, there's the discontinuity again. What am I doing wrong? Fuck. Damn it. Okay. Um... 2 pi. thank you very much. There we go. That's better. Excellent. And I guess we can just multiply these values as well to scale up the... Will that get us a discontinuity again? Shouldn't do. Should cycle back around. Oh no, we haven't actually put a value there yet. <laughs> ah, I'll tell you what though, man. That's giving me kind of um, Akira kind of feels, which is oh, to be awesome. Anyway, so right, now we've got a little animated thing going. Uh, one of the things they did have was they had this nice boundary um, that was a different color. I kind of like to do that. Um, and what that means in my head is that we need to take, we basically want to change the color. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, conditionals, which isn't great for fast shader code, but, you know, for like testing out an idea, this is fine. Um, 
Right, let's say the color if, um, ooh, what do we want to do? So we've got this value, right? This, um, this boundary here. And we say when one minus our y uv position crosses that boundary, that's when we turn things invisible, right? Or visible in this case, actually. Um, let me just check that. I want to remember which way around this is. Yeah, so zero is returned if x is less than the edge. And uh, so x is the second argument. And one is returned. So if you're less than, it's zero. If you're greater than, it's one. And so we inverted it, so um, the values down here are 1, and then they transition, sorry, yeah, the value goes from 1 to 0. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I really need to say about that. Um, So it'd be kind of cool to use this these uh, values we've been calculating. So v, for example. Um, if so, let's have a look. When we cross v, that's when we become solid. So let's just say if um, if. Da -da 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 -da, Right, so this is our um, current. So I want to change some names here. This is going to be boundary. Or edge, they call it edge, didn't they? So edge. Edge. And then this will become our... Um, point val. Or frag val or something. Or just val. I'm not really sure what to call this at the moment. Cool. What did I break? What did I write wrong? <coughs> oh dear. Um, okay, so why we're seeing um, lots of errors here is that um, when you compile a GPU function, Keppel at that point doesn't know what it's going to be used for. Um, so it tries to be kind of forgiving. If, if it compiles successfully as one of the GLSL stages, it goes, okay, it's probably going to be used for that. Um, if it compiles for none of them, um, then it groups the different errors together and shows you uh, the result. So here, we're using it as a fragment stage. So all of these errors are not really relevant to us because in, in all the others, a discard uh, expression is an invalid thing to use. So we can't use it there. But in fragment, um, we've just got invalid arguments for special function if. So our, we've got, got if in here somewhere. Um, oh yeah, we've got... Yeah. Okay, so color is color. Let's do that and make this go away. Bring back the REPL. Okay. Um, so yes, now we're back to business. We've got our edge, we've got value. And we know that when it value crosses um, edge, that's when we get the, that's when we get the transition. So we want just after the transition, just after it's become solid. Oh no, so we, hmm. When it's zero, we discard. Yeah, of course, that's right. So we basically want a small band just after it's become solid um, to be a different color. So let's try that. Let's just say if val, um, an edge is going to be less than it. So val minus, not val minus edge. So if we do yeah, val minus edge. Is less than edge plus null point one. Let's just see that this compiles, which it does. 
And now I want to go and make it blue. Well, that didn't work. Oh, because um, found the invalid attempt to make a local um, to make a local variable color um, with the type vec. Oh, sorry, or vec for vec three. Okay. So what happens is color is a vec three, which means this branch of this if it returns a vec three. But we made a vec four here, which means the total type for this expression is all vec four vec three. Um, so yeah, that's not correct. We should do this and compile it again. Oh, that's way too much. Um, okay, so if the value, which is over the entire thing, minus the edge, It's less than 0 0.1. Maybe do that. Now, here we go. This looks like it's going to be a bit more successful. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of a band. A band that's 0 0.1 thick all the way around. Um, now, what I was hoping... I'm just going to make it a little thinner. What I was hoping is that our bloom would kick in and we'd actually get a bit of blooming off this. But for some reason, we're not. I'm guessing that um, something's not being written into the right buffer here. We'll go and have a look for that in a second. Anyway, that's why I shoved the color value to be up way higher than one um, because I want it to start participating in the, in the bloom stage. And I know why. The reason this isn't happening is we do our brightness and everything's like calculations up here. This is where we find out the bright color. So the problem is we really need to move this whole thing up. And um, yeah, we can totally do that. Right, let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. Period of sign is tau, aka two pi. Sorry it took me so long to see that. I, I saw it come in, but I didn't. I should have read it out. Um, I didn't know that was also, that was called tau. I get really confused with what variables are used for what because they seem to be reused all over the place. I'm going to make that band a little thinner again. Yeah, that's cool. But that's actually starting to look a bit like this guy. This is the one I wanted to, to remake. And then we're going to do something funkier with this. We'll see about that soon. Um... Yeah. All right. Coffee time. So, how do we do this? Ah, what did I say I was going to do? Oh, I was going to move this stuff up, wasn't I? Okay, so let's move our val n and edge stuff into this let. Seems we've already got space for it. There we go. Um... Uh, actually, we should do it in its own let, and the reason is we can then do the discard before we get to anything else. Um, so let's take this whole block here, pop that, push this, right. Let's take this discard and shove it up here. And so far, we shouldn't have changed anything. No, everything's still behaving as it was. That's great. And now we want to do the color stuff. Um, so if we take our color one, uh, calculation and put it right after this one, then we're going to define color and then we're going to redefine it if that bal on the edge uh, stuff holds. And I can get rid of this let. And recompile. And whoo! That seems to be blooming a bit. Damn! Okay. That doesn't look entirely shit, to be honest. I mean, it's very smudgy bloom, but it's... I've made worse things, and most of them on this stream. Oh, that's kind of dope. All right. What now? 
Okay, so... We perturb the line using um, noise. But if what we could do, another way of doing a similar effect, we should actually, um, maybe we should disable this effect for a second. Actually, one second. I, I never actually committed any of the stuff I've been doing. Let's do that first. So this stuff was all, um, what was that? I was in render. Huh, wait a second. What's this then? Oh, I've, okay, I don't want to stage, want to stage things, yes, and I want to stage play with that. Ah, but I do kind of need to stage this stuff as well. Okay, I'm just gonna have to, sorry Metian, to uh, not stage the, uh, to not commit at the beginning of the stream. Unfortunately, I didn't remember. Um, so let's, what am I doing? It's all gone. I've had a, I've had a long day. It's been, um, I've spent the whole day on a whiteboard playing with quad trees uh, and oak trees, trying to find nice ways to speed up or do the equivalent of multiple flood fills um, to work out basically how our space is divided up. It's been interesting. I've got an approach I'm going to try tomorrow, but it's been, uh, yeah, that's left my head somewhat um, empty. So yeah, first go at Dissolve. And let's push episode 58 up to origin. And cool. Groovy. So what's next? Yeah, the other thing we can do is we can take 2D noise, and instead of using it as a texture, we could set it as the um, value itself. So let's have a look here. We're using this edge. So, hmm, it's a completely different strategy. Um, and I'm not sure what to do about this. So, what we could do is we can move. Hmm. I'm trying to work out how if if I should move this out to another another function, or I just copy this shader and do another version of it. I think I'll just copy the shader. I'm going to get rid of the discard stuff, which is going to break a lot of things straight away. Um, all of the things straight away, apparently. That's great. Um, all right, that's still there. Oh, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Radioactive slime shader. Right, um, let's get rid of all of this. Yeah. Whoops, Val is undefined. Yep, we can get rid of this as well. Yeah, get rid of all the work and recompile. So now we just have our bricks again. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to sample the um, sample some 2D noise using the UV coordinates and you set that as the um, the alpha. So we should end up with a bunch of transparency. So Perlin, oh, it wasn't Perlin, sorry, it was Perlin noise. Uh, just say continue. All right, so now it's quite hard to see. Um, again, we're on a very low octave at the moment. So let's just multiply this by some higher value. And we should start getting bits that are, are visible and bits that are invisible. So if I, it'll be a bit easier to see if I used a color in this case. So let's just comment this out and do the same thing with make a vec. Yeah, let's just do, let's just do this. What did I do? Why isn't that right? Well, they're nice. That should be a value between zero and one. Come on, Chris, what are you doing? I would have thought that that, why is that not red?
Well, that's strange. Why is this messing with me? Oh, now it's not working at all. Okay. I've screwed something else up then. What have I got here? The fact it's just gone black is almost like some uniform isn't being sent up. Which would be rather weird. Albedo, normal map now, lights. Strange. Let's go and compile this again. That's working. I've done fucked up something simple. Right. We just had color. That worked. Something funky is going on here. Or I'm being really dense. I think it's that I'm being really dense. That's what I expect to see. Some of it's there, some of it's not. And then I turn that back to one, and it's there. Fine. But then I use the perlin noise as the red component. Yeah, that's what I expected to see. That was really weird, though. Ooh, there's some nasty artifacts around... around there, though. Look at that. Ew. What's that from? Oh, that's probably from... That's probably from another stage, I think. Bit confused there. But okay. Let's just... That is odd, actually. What happens if I just... Um. Hmm. Really don't want to go into testing those right now. Oh, Ponder Pimp's here. Hey, man, how you doing? You are late, but very welcome. Basic dissolve shader. Um. Yeah, you missed a bit. We got um. Where did we get done? We got this guy going. Um. We were basing it all off uh, this video here, and so we were trying to make something roughly. Um, like this. Um, na I, actually, now I look at it, that thing has different colors for the inside and the outside. So I think he is rendering it and doing um, front face culling on one and back face culling on the other. Which is kind of cool. So I think we're going to do that as well, actually. Hmm. Oh, you did see this one. Cool, man. But now I'm just, I'm, I'm being an idiot. Everything was going well, and now I'm, I'm... I've just done a couple of things that didn't make any sense to me. So anyway, yeah, we've got this. Um, and then... So this value is going to be going between 1 and minus 1. Um, so we could just... So, so we could do our normal times 0.5 um, plus 0.5 thing. And then we get the basic noise mapped across there. Um, what do I want to do though? Say alpha is this and set that as alpha and we get slightly transparent object. We can kind of see through that if we if we look. Got some weird banding in there though. Oh, that's probably to do with the back face culling stuff. We'll, we'll see soon. We'll see soon. Um, right. So then if we go and reintroduce that original color. Okay, so that's our transparent thing. Now, what did I want to do? What I thought they were doing was they had kind of a ramp and they were animating that and multiplying that to do the alpha. Um, so how do we want to do this? 
we could use the we could use the step and the um sorry uh, I'm, I'm thinking in my head rather than out loud they're <laughs> really good for a stream um we could use the uh, y uv coordinates again and multiply them with this and that will get us a um a noise map which um is kind of basically transparent at the bottom and solid at the top um that's basically where we were uh, with the other thing. What I was kind of hoping to do was to... Um, words are all gone. All of them. They're just being taken away from me. Um, was to have something that... Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry. <laughs> Having one of these streams, apparently. Um, let me let me just show on here. When this guy dissolves, and that one as well for that matter, um, they progressively, yeah, it, it moves up and down. And to me, that looks like you're um, applying this noise in a way that causes some things to be discarded, and then you're, um, and then what are you doing? Um, and then you're using a ramp. To affect what areas that's applied to. Ah, that bomb looks terrible as well. Um, shouldn't give criticism visuals at all, given my stuff. Right. So, how do we do this? Um, I don't really know. So we could do the discard thing again. Let's just try that. Let's just say um, when let's let's not. So when alpha is greater than 0.5 uh, discard, for example. And then we just set this to 1. And then we get this. So we get the holes that we were talking about before. In fact, if we were gonna do if we're gonna do it this way, we can actually do it in the old shader. We can just take this. Um, let's come back to this guy. I am gonna copy I'm, I'm gonna copy it down because. I really don't want to break that, just in case we, we don't get anything else working for the rest of the stream, because that's happened before. And, uh, yeah, at least we'll have something nice to look at the end of the stream. Okay. Rather than using this Y and all this jazz, we're just going to shove this little bit of math here. N is undefined. Sure. Um, we'll just say this is the edge. Get rid of this. Oh, no, actually, I don't know where we are now. We do need a value. So value can be the Y component of UV. Right. Well, that kind of looks right. Damn, okay. Um, <laughs> that looks slightly better than I thought it would actually and then we're going to invert it because we want it to be dissolving from the top so let's do 1 minus y let's have that edge move up and down um, is, that, is that what I want so hmm I'm trying to work out what we've just made here. We're sampling Perlin noise. And then we're saying if Y crosses the value that's in here, then get rid of it. That's not really what I was after, but it does create a fairly surprisingly like the video effect. That's interesting. Um, What I was thinking is this edge would be 0 0.5 and this oops, would be the value. Right, yes, that's what I expected. So basically then anything that is less than 0 0.5 um, 
becomes trans but gets discarded. Everything above that is solid, and that's all based on the noise function. And because it's boring just looking at it like this, let's do a Perlin noise that is 3D. And let's slow that down a lot. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Right. <laughs> what I'm saying, so what you're saying is when I come, everything is fucked up. Pretty much. <laughs> Coincidence. No, I mean, the running thread between the fuck-ups in all the streams is me. So, really, I mean, that's the, that is the constant um, between them all. Okay, so now we've got this. This is the effect we want, but we want to modulate that based on um, based on some other value. So let's let's do hmm. We do want it to have a vertical component. So. Let's, uh, I'm just going to move this stuff down to a new line. And then I'm going to do some more stuff here. Let's put the Y of UV back in again, or 1 minus Y UV. Okay, so now it's up near the top. Because we're adding... Um, adding a value on. Okay, so down here we're adding zero, and up here we're adding one. And that's pushing everything over this edge. So, um, what else can we do? I suppose we could Let's just put sign a now in here and see what happens. Yeah, kind of like that. And again, as with normal, want to slow down time a bit. Did I just speed it up? Yes, I did. Moron. Huh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, I, I want to uh, do negative time here. Uh, sorry, negative. We're adding a value, which is creating the ramp, and now we're subtracting some value to bring it back down into the range. That kind of looks like what we're going for, though. It's actually funny, even though we're using the step function, which is going to be really aliasy, uh, or really hard edge, the bloom stuff is kind of softening it off. No, I mean, not much, but... I mean, if we made this a little softer, so the internal stuff didn't ha didn't have the hard line, um, yeah, this is starting to work. <laughs> that's not so bad. Um, right. Okay. So that's roughly what we want. Um, let's do minus. I do it like that. Is that wrong? Yes. Damn it! Damn it, Bobby. Let's do that and get everything back. And then let's invert the Y. Because I do want it coming from the top. I think it just looks cooler. Yeah, that's nice. It's pausing just before it gets to the top and then coming down again. I want to go all the way. Um, so... If we just add a little more of a fudge factor here, then it won't quite quite reach the bottom, and it'll go past the top. Yeah, like that. Nice. Okay. That's kind of working. We get up the time as well. So the uh, noise is a little more active. 
But yeah, that, that seems to me, it actually went better than I expected. That kind of mimics what was going on in this guy. Here. And all of these effects really, to me, look like kind of the same thing. Um, just using a different kind of noise. So, I mean, here you can see some cellular noise being put on the outside, if that's not my eyes deceiving me. But um, And here, yeah, we just got different things making different kinds of contours and stuff like that. Um, damn fly. Autumn just brings them in. But yeah, this is kind of like this. So basically, if we if we turn the speed up of this guy, it would be cool if we could tighten the band a bit where the um, where the changeover is happening. How do we do that? Let, let's speed up the effect so it kind of feels more like that. Uh, where's now? So this is the Perlin noise up here. So if we turn this up to one... Yeah, then the effect is all is going pretty quickly. And then it's just the sweep is taking its time, which I like. But I want that band to be a lot tighter. Basically, the transition from 0 to 1. Um, and so... Let's just... Increase this. Yeah. I mean, this is a bit of a shitty way of doing it, but... Um, there we go. That's pretty much what I was going for. What we'd want to do is we would... I would if I was going to actually make this nicer... Uh, rather than just fudging it, I'd like to reformulate this so I can control the parameters a lot nicer. But while we're just live coding it like this, this is just fine to for me to prove a concept to myself. Um, <laughs> dissolve all the things. Talking of which, actually, did that... Oh, really? Did you hear that fly? Landed right on the microphone. Little bastard. That is all I need. Yeah. That's it. Working from home and everything's falling apart. It's just there's like cereal bowls and flies and it's just going to get every week is just going to be like a, a diary of my self-destruction. Um, I'm making games. It's going to be the best game. It's actually a lot of fun. It's been really cool. Um, I'm saying, question, would it be easier to apply the same thing to a full object? Would it be easier to apply the... Here your sphere seems empty. Thickness one, let's say. Um... We don't really have volume objects in general. Like, every everything's just a skin. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure if that... that I'm, I'm not entirely clear on that. Um, I mean, if we're ray tracing, I suppose we could do kind of solid objects. And, th and then you could... I mean, but then you could just build the sphere out of uh, one of these functions anyway. You would perturb the sphere with noise and that would be fine. Um, we could try to apply it to everything. Because right now, it's just that ball uh, that's getting this shader. But there's no reason we couldn't apply it to more. Um, basically, all I've done is I've specialized ball. And I'm using dissolve pipeline here. But I guess if I just went down to the asymp thing and did this. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. We're still using malt in here. Let's get rid of that. Um, and said uh, continue. Then... Uh, <laughs> then every object in the scene would start dissolving. Was that was that uh, what you were asking about? Push! Thank you, Barrett. Yeah, we really should. Yeah, so what we want to do... What time is it now? Jesus, it's not even nine. We've got loads of time. Um, I love... Sorry, I've got to go and have a look at this lion dissolving. That's super cool. Oh, 
That's neat. It's so good. It's the perfect goofy green as well. Right. Anyway, let's um, let's just undo that for the whole level. It's easy to add back if you want it. Um, save this. Um, let's do. Okay. So then we've got um. Noise dissolve and push. Actually, before I send that anywhere, because we've got two uh, GPU functions with the same name here, is that going to cause an error? It shouldn't do actually, because I don't think this declares a normal function. Let me just have a look at this. Add external function. No, we just call set symbol. Right, actually, that, that's for good reason, because we often have many GPU functions uh, with the same name in the same file, because we have overloading. Um, this function is only used uh, in the case that we call the GPU function from the REPL anyway. So that's actually fine. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just push that. Um, let's... Dissolve us two S's. Sorry about that. <laughs> it doesn't today. Um, wee! Back down here. So let's try just switching out this noise function quickly and seeing what happens. Because we've got a few noise functions over in uh, Nineveh. Some goofy ones as well. Um, let's, should we use a cellular noise? That'd be cool. Do we have a 3D cellular noise? Yes, we do. What the hell will that look like? Okay, Perlin, where are you? Here we go. Cellular noise. <laughs> it's really blobby. Wasn't what I expected. Doesn't look as cool as I expected. But maybe if we um, Don't have those fudge factors in. Where were the ones that... Oh, wait, no. This is the... I'm, I'm doing it in the wrong place. Well, uh, noise. That's uh, defining... That's This is the version where we just define um, an offset on the boundary. This version is where we actually do the... Um, yeah. We're uh, multiplying with the noise to get the ramp and everything. So, uh, bah, bah, bah. words, words, words. I'm using all, like a bunch of the right words, but not in the right order at all. Uh, anyway, let's go to Perlin Noise here and just switch this out with Cellular Noise. Okay, so it's not that great either. Um, actually, that's kind of cool. Just pulsing away there. Right, let's do... Let's look at one of the other ones. We've got a, there's some more goofy noise in here. Cubist noise. What the hell is that? I haven't looked at this stuff in ages. Cubist noise. Oh, shit. Okay, we don't have 3D cubist noise. Um, oh, we do, but it has a range clamp. Okay. Um, I have no idea what that value is meant to be. Let's try that. What the fuck? That's kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, it looks awful, but... What the fuck? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> what is going on there? I need to put that on something else. I need just a regular shader so I can see what Cuba's noise is meant to look like. That's very strange. All right. Fractal brownie emotion, I need to fill that in. Hermite noise. This is... Not so exciting, if I remember correctly. Whoops. Um, yeah, that's just another noise. Not too snazzy. Right. 
Misk, yes, we have some misk noise, like polka dot noise and stars noise. Let's put some stars noise on it. Uh, yeah, we don't have a VEC3 version of that, but we might have a, a VEC2. So let's just get rid of the time component and do this. What? Okay, then there's an additional argument I don't know about. Stars noise. Oh my. Okay, so yes. It's polka dot noise and... Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Okay, so stars noise takes a VEC2. Fine. A probability threshold. I don't know, 0.5? Or 0.4, apparently, because that's what my fingers typed. Max dimness. One. Two over radius. Oh, I know. Ugh. Oh, wait. You are a special kind of stupid, Chris. Yeah, that just isn't working well. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, let's have a look at the... Let's get it back to something that worked again. Da, 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 da. How might noise? Yeah, there's not really much else to try here. Um, we could try the polka dot noise. Polka dot noise in in 3D with a radius low, which I guess is 0 0.01, and we'll try 0 0.1 for the large. Oh, okay. Nope. Okay. Ah, interesting. Yeah, of course, we've got our band, and then we're multiplying it by the noise, which is... Picked by the sign thing, so that's dominating. Huh. Okay. So we should do some more experiments, because the ramp is kind of shitty at the moment anyway. So we could rewrite that. But, to be honest, I'm in a kind of uh, place of, like, diminishing returns here. Uh, the Berlin noise looked cool. And that's all I really needed. So... It's kind of tricky when the other effects are just variants. I want to do the inside being a different color from the outside, so I'm going to try that. And I need, really need to catch up with the uh, slack, because I've been kind of rambling. Um, pushing pixels with the LSD, nice. How come the walls stay? Because we're only running it on this... Uh... Oh, wait. When we was that when we applied it to the whole scene? Did the wall stay then? I didn't notice that. I th oh no, I I know why they did start dissolving, but because of these silly fudge factors, um, it, the ramp isn't running all the way up uh, the geometry. I think uh, there's there's just some stupid values here that make it kind of weird. Um. Barrett, you are an unquotable man, but <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Um, I managed to answer, pretty please, push with all dissolving too. Sure, I'll do that now. I think you're the only one that actually tests this stuff out anyway, uh, so... I am happy to. Let's do that. And we'll get rid of Malt again because we know that's an issue down here because I removed the argument. So yeah. So I think I see it coming up. Yeah, you can kind of see it starting on the wall there. 
But a, a lot of this is just kind of funky. Kind of cool how it goes all the way down that, though. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going to push with this, are we? So now I need something, I need something to do that's entertaining. So we're going to do the uh, back face, front face thing, just so we can have a different um... <laughs> thermite noise, fizz noise. Um... All right, let's uh, let's carry on with this nonsense. Okay, I'm going to get back to this guy here. Okay, so. One other thing that was kind of annoying was I, originally we tried just using uh, the alpha, so we didn't have to do discard, we just set the alpha on the object. And that was kind of cool, has nice properties, we can um, set things to be partially transparent rather than just like discarded or kept. Um, but the problem was that, oh actually, yeah, the problem was um, that because the fragment is drawn, even though it's um, its alpha is set to zero, it's written to the um, to the depth buffer. And so then it will occlude things that are further away in the scene. So what we're going to do instead, and, and, and that was a problem because we do, we've turned off um, back face culling. Um, yeah, we've turned off uh, face culling in general. So um, we were drawing the front and back, but the back was still getting discarded even though the front was transparent. Let's just remake the problem and then we can see it again. Um, because this is kind of cooler, I'm going to start damaging this one now. Um, so let's recompile this and we'll see it apply and then we're back to this, which is cool, but not as cool. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we are going to use step and we are going to set it as the um, transparency at the end here. We're going to get rid of this. Oh no, that's the bit that does the banding. So that's kind of cool. We kind of want that. Um, but we're not going to use it for the discard anymore. When we recompile, we can see that we get a... Um, that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> we get a transparent thing with a skin growing over it now that looks that looks all right on the stream um okay so what have i got here um yeah there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on here uh that i need to get right let's have a look so i'm going to disable this for now right yeah this is what i wanted so notice that we can't see um, the other side of the sphere now. But if we go inside, whoops, shit. If we go inside, we can see it. It's right there, but as soon as we go away, um, these transparent uh, fragments here are occluding the uh, ones behind them, even if they're non-transparent. So we have to deal with that. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to go up to where Ball is... Um, where is draw specified of bull? Right here. And we're going to do this um, in two steps. So instead of saying setting uh, curl face to nil, we're going to set it to front. So now this is going to cull all the, f the front faces, but leave the back ones. So we can see all the inside. It's kind of trippy because it looks like you're looking to a, uh, the sphere at a different angle. But that's just the inside. And then, um, let's move this into a helper function. So go to labels, um, inner or something. Just going to move a couple of things down. Ugly, but it'll do. Ugh, nah, leave it. It's already ugly. Okay, 
So with the curl face set to front, we're going to draw, um, we're going to call inner, which is going to draw once, doing exactly what we're doing now. And then we should be outside of this, which is going to return curl face back to back. We call inner again, and then we get both sides. And that is exactly what I wanted to see. And now this is all being done with, um, with transparency. Which is cool. And it gives us a little more control. So yeah, we can have nice, we can have softer edges there. If we weren't using step, for example. Um, but we could do smooth step, actually, for example. Smooth step. Between edge 0 and edge 1, it's going to interpolate, it's going to do the transition between 0 and 1. So then we can say um, edge and edge, they can have the band, which is plus 0.1. Check that out. Really smooth, almost just washing away. And by controlling that band, we can tighten that up. So let's uh, let's tighten that up a little. And we can still do the tricks we were doing before on this, but I just like I I like that. So that's damn it. That's another thing I wanted to do that's actually done now. Um, what next? Um, I mean, they make the insides of their objects a different color. Could do that. Um, so, if we take the frag normal and dot product that with the um, with the camera direction, do we have that information? That would be kind of handy. And then we could tell uh, which was the inside and which was the outside. We can color it differently. But, hmm. That's kind of easy too. <laughs> what to do? I mean, it, it's, it's, easy in, like, it, it's easy in that way where I know it's going to work. So it's not super interesting um, to do it properly. Like when you know it's going to work, but it's a bit more work to do, then it's kind of like, ah, well... Like I could just throw a fudge factor in there instead, you know? So we could just say, um, like, inside is um, inside, and we could pass inside here. Um, and then we do inner T and inner nil, right? And then we go and add a uniform here, which is called inner, and takes bool. Oops. Why didn't you like that? Did this go wrong somehow? That's complete. The pipeline's recompiled. I definitely should have. Continue. Huh. Unknown keyword argument inside. Did I call it something else? Oh, it's got, I called it inner over here inside um, so now we're passing that information so then we could just do something dumb like uh, where's the color color if inside um, yeah maybe green And then we have, yeah, this ball that just contains greenness, pure green. And uh, yeah, because it's like that should be blooming all over the place as well. But are we doing that in the right place for that? Yeah, we're doing that. So that's fine. So that works. Hmm. What have we got to do next? 
Well, that might actually be it. I mean, other than, like, say, all of this stuff really is about generating the masks, right? So if you had the right gradients, then all you have to do is multiply that gradient or offset that gradient by some value and use all the stuff we've looked at already and it'll just work. Um, so, and because I'm not artistic in any way, getting actually making those gradients is more of a pain in the ass. Um, there's some nice noise functions on that though. Um, where was that one? It was after this dude. That almost like looks like you're... How do you get those contours? How would you get those contours? That's not too bad. Maybe just take a sign of the value that comes out of the Perlin noise. I don't know. Let's have a look. Um, ah, we'll add an inside to this as well. Seeing as we're... Uh, even though we're not using it. Um, let's go back here and change this back to three because it looked nicer. There we go. Um, yeah, what did I want to try? Oh yeah, we would wanted to take the result and then do something funky with it. So what happens if we just take the the sign of the pearl in noise? No, that doesn't work. Hmm. It's more banding, but it's not very contoury. I was kind of hoping because then we'd have a. You've got values going between um, one and minus one. I suppose we could do this after here. Um... So a value between zero and one times two. Pi as a single float. Oops. Sign this. No. I was hoping that, yeah, but so at this point we've got a value going between zero and one coming out of the noise function. I thought that if we took the sign of that, we would get some um, kind of peaks and troughs across that gradient. Um, Kind of like that, actually. If uh, we slowed this down. Yeah, that kind of... Uh, it's not quite it. And this color actually makes it look worse. Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> so, that's where we're at. What is going on? There's so much strange candy talk all of a sudden. I even made me crave a Kinder Surprise or a Cadbury's Cream Egg. So now we've got product placement in this stream. Damn you! Um, oh, Pomme de Pips cooking for Le Mignon. That is a good thing to do. Man, I need to come visit. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, I've already eaten, but I'm hungry. Right, um, whenever you start talking about meat like that. Mm -mm. Harrod's just getting inspired by the green to get mints as well. <laughs> I'm costing you a fortune in confectionery. Excellent, good. I don't mind, in, like, uh, causing these problems. It would probably look really cool if the sphere was rotating as well. You're right. Probably would. But we could always, rather, rather than rotating the sphere, which, you know, means looking at some other part of the code base, um, let's just take the, the UV and... Man, if I could type UV, it would really help. 
um, x uv y uv and um, and add time oh yeah that's not going to work is it we get that nasty c or it just highlights the seam rather than anything else um, if we just pretend that seam's not there because that was already a problem Uh, yeah, then we can go back and put some nasty color stuff on it, and then change these back to one. Maybe we can get a bit more fatness in there. It's kind of ugly. Um, oh yeah, let's just fatten up the line. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. Actually, we can offset the result coming out of the uh, Perlin noise a bit as well. Um, if we add 0.7 to it, just give it a bit more thickness. 8, 1, 9. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Dude. That's alright. Okay. Um, other than the fact that the parameters in our function are a complete horrible soupy mess, the fundament's there, you know? The fundamentals are kind of laid out. Um, we've got our band. Like, normally what we'd do for the band instead is, let's uh, make a little, um, that's not a pen that's going to work on a tablet. That's a whiteboard pen. Let's, uh, bring up the doodle device. Doodle. Um, yeah, what we could do instead, because we could um, oh, where where do we? Where are we? What's going on? Who is this? Right. So it would be nicer to generate uh, the band in a, in a, in just a better way. And it'd be cool just to have um, a graph that goes like this, that's just um, up for the point that we need it. Or we could curve it um, using either a step or a smooth step function for the whole thing. And for that, you could basically just generate this. Oops, sorry. I can't draw for shit. Kind of this graph. And then if we clamp it to zero, uh, and one, we get this. And then if we step from the moment we're over zero, then we get this, uh, which gives us that kind of thing. So we could use that to control the band in a much nicer way. We can actually parameterize on when it starts and when it ends and when the edges. Like, if I was thinking straight, we would have got that in the beginning. Um, but I wasn't, it's the end of the day. And I feel pretty happy that we've uh, done the dissolve as it is. We have half an hour left to go. So, basically, I'm kicking things at you um, to for just general questions. Um, and I'm just going to talk about some Keppel stuff as well. So, um, I've pushed a load of stuff to the release branch. Um, so if I look at Keppel and see what's been going on. The big one, if you're one of my um, patrons, you will have already seen this, uh, but I got the um, multi-draw indirect stuff working um, the other week. So we did that on the stream. We basically developed that feature together. I just kicked my computer. Um, and then we ran into some bugs at the end of the stream. Because what we had read from the spec was that, um, oh, quick refresher for those who weren't there, there for that. You're able to define buffers in GL, which describe separate draw calls, and then make one call to dispatch them all at once. It means you can't switch out uniforms, you can't switch out VAOs and all that kind of stuff amongst all those calls. But there's a lot of things you can do. Like if you just, I mean, you could put all the parameters in SSBOs or UBOs, for example, and then you can deal with them inside the shader. It's a really powerful feature. 
Um, and what's really cool about it as well, you can either write these draw calls into a C array and dispatch it from the CPU side, um, or you can write them all into a GPU array and then tell the, um, from the CPU side again, tell it which buffer to pull the, um, the draw calls from, which means you could write a compute shader which works out what the draw calls need to be, and then you make a single call from the CPU side, which dispatches potentially thousands of draw calls. And it works really well. This is all part of the uh, approaching zero driver overhead, um, what's it, the features, extensions, and things like this that are in OpenGL. Um, and we, yeah, we were having a load of problems in our test trying to get that, this to work. As you might have noticed here, the issue was that um, OpenGL has multiple um, kinds of profile. So there's a compatibility profile, which includes all the old stuff that was removed from GL. And then there's the core profile, which is just the stuff kind of 3.3 and up. And um, they've trimmed out a lot of the fat, um, or at least a lot of the old stuff. By doing multi-draw indirect from a array on the CPU side is only available in compatibility. So every time, and, and Keppel only deals with core profile. So every time we tried to do it, we'd get an error and the error would be um, like an invalid enum kind of error, which just didn't make any sense. Um, and then when I was looking in the spec, I saw this really annoying shit. Where is it? Because I, I, I basically normally read the core profile. And... Oh yeah, here we go. This is exactly the right bit. Um, yeah, it was saying here, um, for these kind of things, an invalid operation error is generated if zero is bound to the draw and direct buffer. But that didn't make any sense to me because, because you only use draw and direct buffer if you're doing um, multiple draw and direct from a GPU array or from a GPU buffer in a, yeah. From a, yeah from a, a GL buffer object in GL parlance. But yeah, in, in Keppel terms, if you're doing it from a, a GPU array. If you're doing it from a C array, you want this to be nil. Uh, you want this to be zero. So that really threw me off. And then that got me going on this kind of big old traipse around the internet until I finally found out what it was. And I felt like a complete muppet uh, for not catching that sooner. But that's really good. So that actually went in. Um, I just found another bug. So I, I, I added support for Boolean uniforms, but I just found a bug before the stream and I've pushed another fix for that. Um, but I should really go through the problem because I'm not happy with the fix. It's it's going to be okay for the next month. Um, and it proved to be realistic. It's not going to get fixed before um, before next year. But here's the um, here's the drill. Let's go to render. In Keppel, when you define a uniform, um, it's a keyword argument essentially. Let's go and look at the things file, so we can see a draw call. Here's a draw call right here. And so here are the different uniforms being passed in. We've got the we've got the Call to map G, here's the pipeline, here's the stream of vertices, and here are the uniforms. Now, you don't want to upload a uniform on every draw call necessarily. If you're doing 20 draw calls, but they're all using the same um, sampler for their albedo um, uniform, let's say you're calling the same pipeline 20 times in a row, and all of them use the same sampler, then just set this on the first one and then do all the draw calls without passing anything in, passing in nil. Then Keppel isn't gonna upload it every single time and you get whatever the last value uh, used in a draw call was. This is great. This, um, by, not, by not specifying more uniform values, you're changing less state, um, which means you get less overhead and all this kind of stuff. Um, basically, you get a lot more throughput when you're not setting this every single time. It doesn't matter for our little toy project, but it can matter else, well, it matters a lot elsewhere. However, um, you might be able to see the problem. So basically, whenever one of these is nil, we don't upload it. Um, that's a problem if your argument is a Boolean, which can only be T or nil. It means that when it was T, we, we set it. And then when it's nil, we don't set it. And because it retains the value from the last draw, it gets set to true, and then it never turns false again, which is stupid. So um, yeah, that, that turned out to be a problem that I caught just before the stream. 
Um, so right now, if you use a boolean in um, in Kettle, uh, we always upload that uniform, and I don't like that at all because that means you're always doing one of those changes on every draw call. Ugh. So yeah, probably not the biggest deal in the world, but it really pisses me off. Um, so we're going to need to do something about that in the long term. And I'm not really sure what the um, the answer for that is. I really don't want the um, value you pass into this to be like... Uh, at the moment it's T or it's nil, uh, but it always uploads it. I don't want it to be something like true or false. That's kind of... It's so unlispy. Um... But at the same time, we need something to differentiate between we're trying to set it to nil and we're trying to uh, just ignore this end. We could cache the last... Actually, we could do that. We could, um, for Boolean values only, we could cache the last value that was used. No, that doesn't apply. I don't, I don't think that's valid. I think... Basically, we need to find out then when, like, where the uniforms are cached. Is it on the program object? Um, because if it is, then we can probably cache it inside the uh, pipeline. And then per draw, like per call to that function, we either upload it or don't based on the last value. Um, but yeah, it's not pretty. I won't do that for any of the other types. We're going to keep it as nil means don't upload. Um, but yeah, not so sure what else to do there. So we'll come back to that. Um, what else is going on? Da -da 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 -da. Default base vertex to zero. Yeah, I got, I got in um, support for base vertex for um, for buffer streams. Um, Do, do, do. Oh yes, actually, we yeah we had a discussion about this on one of the other streams as well, which was um, making different buffer stream objects but sharing the same VAO underneath. Uh, there's functions for that now. Uh, what else did I do? This was the other. This was oh wow, that was a couple of weekends ago. God damn, or a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, that was a while. What else? Yeah, that was on 56. Damn, it's been a... That's the other thing I haven't done. I forgot to upload the second part of our stream last week. I, again, sorry for not being as on the ball. I know I was never really on the ball, but uh, less so recently. Um, and also, Mfiano, I know you're watching this stream because I, you requested uh, that we would do this. Um, and great suggestion, by the way. Thank you so much. But uh, also, sorry to you for not having any new uh, progress on Vario in a long time. It just, uh, yeah, it's a bummer, but it, it is what it is. So what now? Um, yeah, any suggestions from you guys? Or we could just end, end early. Um, I can't think of anything else with this particular effect that I want to dig into right now, because the rest will be, like, where I would go from here is to do cleanup, which I really don't want to do right now. That requires cogent thinking. Um, and did we do 3D noise? Yeah, we're using 3D noise now. Uh, but we're using time as the third component. I mean, we could use the fragment position. Let's do that. Let's um, frag dissolve. Where's Perlin? Here. Um, let's use the this position here, I believe, is world pos. So we can just shove that in. There we go. So even though the object's rotating, because we're using the world position, we're just rotating the texture, and then we're... Um... Actually, no, yeah, we're using world position, aren't we? So regardless of how we rotate the object, um, this is not going to rotate. Um... And we're getting, obviously, the same pattern each time. We could... Let's uh, take this sign stuff out as well. I'll pro... Oh, no, let's... Uh, I don't know. Oops. Ooh. I 
I mean, we could add a couple of octaves of this, so... Berlin noise. Berlin noise times two. Um, that's going to sum up to between minus two and two. So I'm going to uh, multiply this by 0.25. Screw it, let's just do more one point one. Really want to scale these contributions as well, so this will be one point five. And then we can do times one point six. Um oh wait, I'm being an idiot, that's why. Ugh, fool. Position times two. That's where it's we're gonna get the higher frequencies. Not multiplying the result. Yeah, there we go. Oh, actually, that looks a lot more like the uh, first one in that video. Check this one out. Where is it? Bit more. Jaggedy jaggedy. Starts looking a lot more like this. Which is just a few octaves of Perlin noise stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Cisco Jose is saying, I mean, we could use a 3D noise based on fragment position. Done. And then use time to modify all of them. Definitely could do that too. Let's, um... BPOS, which is going to be for Perlin noise, which is going to be, um... Position... Plus... Zero, zero now. And then we'll use PPOS here. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of this one just because it's, it's, it's getting too bitty to look at on the stream, but that's kind of nice. Um, actually, maybe I'll add it back in. If we get up close, it's probably fine. How's that? Not bad. Um, that way you could have the effect continue to animate, but also get things to work well with each other. Yeah, that works fine. That's neat. <laughs> Parrot's still ranting about bad steak. I mean, I don't disagree. Bad steak is would keep me ranting for a good couple of days, to be honest. Um, Let's have a look. What else we got going on? Um, haven't I don't think I've got too much new on the type system I was making. I've got generalize and um, yeah, generalization working. Um, I'm not sure if I showed that off on the other stream, uh, but it generally means that like yeah, I I, I can define uh, statically type functions and the inference seems to work well. I really need to start thinking about the next things I want to do in the language that I'm making to use that uh, type system, but I haven't touched that in a few weeks because I just haven't had time. Um, for those who are interested in what I'm doing uh, during my day job, I've started doing dailies uh, both on my blog at techsnuffle.com and also I've been um, tweeting them out as they go. So if you, if you want to be bothered by the little kind of day-to-day -day activities, and definitely, uh, you can definitely join that. They tend, they, I, I want to get the quality of them up because uh, I'm feeling at the moment I'm, because I'm doing it at the end of the day, I'm tired. Um, maybe I should move doing dailies to the first thing in the morning because then I'm a little groggy from waking up, but my, my writing quality might be a bit better. Not sure. But it is nice to close off the day just going, right, I've done this, here you go. Um, ICTR, Emacs and Lisp, cool. Yeah, man, it's great. And GL, which is uh, cool too. <laughs> cool. 
Cross hatch patterns. I'm not sure what cross patch. If you've got a if you've got a grayscale texture for it, we can definitely do it. Um, oh yeah, since I've mentioned links, I should post them here. Textnoffle.com. Bam. Um, <laughs> cheers, Darius. Right. What else? Um, I don't think I've got anything new on the. Yeah. What What's the next thing we need to do on Keppel? Like, I should actually go and have a look. Um, it, if you guys think I should stop, by the way, I'm I'm I can do that. Um, at the moment, I'm just uh, enjoying your company. So, Keppel GitHub. Um, GitHub. Let's have a look. Um, oh, someone's been reporting bugs. Thank you, bug reporter. Sorry that I'm missing code from docs single thread swank. Ah, okay. Um, I'll look into that soon. That'll, that'll be a cock up on something simple. Got to look into GPU fences because that was uh, one of the things we saw on the other stream. Something a little suspect. It might be how I was using them. I might not understand, but I need to check to see that that implementation is correct. Um, base instance support. We don't do that yet. We definitely need to. I can't remember why this is a bug, but sure. A bug, I guess, is... Yeah, <laughs> missing features are kind of a bug. Um, incorrect type on IVEC for GPU CRA. Let's have a look. Sorry to Shelvik if you're out there for not um, getting to this sooner. All right, type of. So you're making a GPU array. Ooh, wait a second, what's going on here? Element type IVEC4. Okay, so yeah, you've got a list with one element. Um, that should be fine. Pull G, simple vector four. Shouldn't the type be simple array, sign 32. Four as vec four type return array. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that does look like something's up. All right, that's a bug. That's a bug. Okay. Um, also, by the way, um, it's been like this whole episode was down to Cisco Jose and uh, Mfiano pestering me um, in the in the Lisp Discord uh, to uh, to try this out. So great idea! Thank you so much. Um, if anyone else wants to kick around suggestions to me, um, I'd love to hear them. Uh, they can't always be done based on. It's basically what what can I reasonably realistically do in two hours, and what can I do with pretty low mental uh, energy <laughs> left at the moment. Uh, but yeah, so um, uh, what's the sideways tab add-on? It's actually just called tree tabs, mate. This one here, uh, it is great, or at least it's. It's good enough that I don't hate it. Uh, it's definitely better than having all the tabs across the top. Um, all right, so let's um, let's have a look. Yes, some um, cachings. Oh yeah, I know. What we, actually, what we do need to do next episode was like to look into where the fuck all of our um, where all the allocations are coming from in this in this thing because. I was, uh, we were, oh god, I remember we did this on the stream the other day, and it's just disgusting, because it never used to be like this. So if we do time, and do play, and start, and pass in a number of frames, we can see that it allocated like 500 fucking kilobytes. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Where did that come from? Um, that really, really bugs me, because one of the things I was quite proud of is, previously... Kebble allocated very little. Um, 
So something has gone fucking sideways on me. Um, and I really want to know <laughs> what did this. Uh, so I've got a couple of macros here. Really? Capital render state doesn't designate a package? Okay. Wonder what happened to that? Um, okay, then how do I use this? This is using SB profile, which I never remember how to use. Um, so this is just going through and calling profile on. Oh, yeah, so it's going through all the packages, grabbing all the symbols that are bound functions and telling and making a list out of them and then it's saying profile all of those functions and the idea then i guess is um i can do sb profile um reset and then um, i guess i can do this and then sb profile report Right, okay. Um, okay, so now we can look into this. We can measuring profile overhead done. And we can look at the cons section and see where that is. So we've got initialized P is... Whoa, what the fuck? Okay, hold on. There are 12 calls that amount to 32K. What are you? So let's just do this. Initialized P. Okay. That should be a, like a a check. Yeah, that's just accessing a struct, doing EQ against this. This should be accessing a struct and doing equal against that. And I've just fucking lost that. Um, that buffer, where is it? Uh, slime xref. Again, we're accessing. Oh, for fuck's sake. Go here. Yeah, we're accessing a, accessing a field in a struct. Oh, that's, that's being used in print objects, but yeah, print object is. Uh, no, that's not what I'm after. Not who calls. I want to go to initialize P. There we go. <sighs> this one, if we take a GPU buffer, we look at the rays, which again is just a field, and it's just making sure it's not set to some. It's doing EQ checks on all of these. So, in that case, I think what we're getting there is a slightly spurious result. Um, you'll often see allocations being done um, when uh, generic functions are being hammered a lot. It's just one of those times that it it does something and it triggers some action that ends up allocating some stuff. Um, Median's also seen some stuff strange. Thank you so much, by the way, all your reports. I know I say this every week, but it's really valuable. Um, again, another 32K on gen texture. This feels like... This feels like it's doing an allocate because it feels like it's allocated something small and it's just tipped it over enough that it's having to allocate like another page of memory or something like this. Um, I'm not sure what page size is on here, but let's just... Again, that's 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 65k, but that's nowhere near the 500k we were seeing. Um, this is just telling us that a whole bunch of functions we were interested in weren't called. What is going on though? Now, I've got some... What have we got? We've got 10 minutes left. I have some code that's probably bit rotted to fuck. Um, but it... Just trying to think. Um, it was a profile that I made for using with Keppel, and it can instrument the majority of Keppel and all um, code that's written using like GPU functions and all that kind of stuff. So it's really good for profiling time related things, but it doesn't have any ability to tell us about allocations. 
So what I really need is something that's going to um, catch more things than this. And so what I think, rather than just using SB profile, uh, we'll try using the statistical profiler. And that's also built into SBCL, and it works by just every so often it wakes up, it like interrupts the program, and it records where it is. Um, isn't time showing the consist for SB profile? Um, Now you're asking. But we were getting 500k um, from time before we started SB Profile. Um, SB Profile is only recognizing 65k of that. Um, and there is some estimated overhead. I'm not sure how good those uh, those things are. And I know we've only run one frame, but this does scale pretty much. Like if I do um, two frames here. Oh, actually, I need to. Oh, no, I did a reset. Sorry. Um, oh, come on. We're still seeing about 32K, but now we're seeing a meg. So there is something that isn't being uh, touched here, and it's probably I'm calling it out to some regular um, common Lisp um, function that's doing a load of allocations. Um, like I'm creating lists everywhere, or I'm, I'm doing something fucking stupid. Um, and we've got to find what it is. Now I can never remember how to use the uh, statistical profiler, but I bet I have some code knocking around. Um, around here somewhere. Yeah, so if I, if I do require sbsprof, is that how you do it? Sure, let's do that. Um, then how is this used? Okay, wow, this, uh, this might be useful. But we can just, let's just take this code and go here. Let's go find our little test. This bit is going to be the form. Okay, so we reset the statistical profile that we start profiling. Uh, we're going to need to do something for quite a few seconds. Um, so let's do... Let's do a few hundred frames. It's quite low frame rate at the moment, but let's try that. Um, hey, Johnny. Just uh, catching the end of us right now. Uh, I'm looking into some profiling on Keppel because I'm seeing some nasty allocations come up. It's very strange. Um, okay, so the statistical profiler will tell us who got called when. And the problem is, I mean, like, it's all right, but when a lot of the, wow, that's just disgusting. Um, when a lot of the functions I'm interested in uh, are really, like, running very quickly, it couldn't catch a lot of the stuff that I needed, which is why I wrote the um, other profiler, which was, uh, yeah, much more, uh, yeah, used a higher resolution timer and stuff like this. I mean, Common Lisp is bound to by the um, by the uh, timer function, its internal timer function, which in SPCL for some, at least on on Linux, seems to be only um, milliseconds, which is kind of useless for what I need. But it's uh, I'm going to say it's useless. It's it's a fantastic tool. It doesn't do everything, and um, yeah, profiling is all. <laughs> Is is better when done with lots of angles. So, but it doesn't seem like SB Prof tells us about bytes used, which is kind of annoying. Um, I wonder if I don't think we can profile um, common lisps functions. Um, Barrett, uh, Colleen, the uh, the bot Colleen isn't hasn't been here in a long time. I, I haven't. I haven't talked to Shimera in a long time either, which is kind of a shame. Um, but yeah, I, I stopped be having enough time to get to his streams. 
We just haven't talked in a while. Um, so probably the bot dropped off a little while ago. Either he had a reason for taking it off, or um, again, he just hasn't noticed, and that's completely fine. Um, don't, don't, I would say, I mean, if you want to talk to him, of course, go right ahead, but uh, don't bother him about it. Don't pressure him about it, because, you know, he, he was doing a great thing for us anyway by having the bot as long as we were. I was asking, wouldn't it be great if there was a um, graphical thing where we could see where all the Alex come from? Totally. Um, yeah, Medellin, um reset FBOs is cons in quite a lot. Uh, but that... Oh, wait. Does that happen on every play? No. Play, like, on start we call reset. We do actually allocate quite a bit here, I suppose. So that could be it. Um... All right, maybe that's it. Let's not do a reset. Um, oh, fucking hell. Let's not do a reset on start. And... Let's just... Uh, let's just time this guy again. If that was it, that was really funny. Um, actually, we don't need to do... Ah, uh, fuck it. We'll let it run for a few seconds. No, it's still consing 200 meg. It's not the um, it's not the setup, unless I didn't compile that. Let's see. We were still seeing 500. Okay, so we're still seeing roughly the same number of bytes consed. Um, yeah, let's have a look for SB profile. Uh, what is all that? Um, hmm. It doesn't mention that we can't specify CLs functions. I wonder where I got that in my head from then. Um, let's uh, leave that code there. Right, let's go back to capital core profile. And let's stick packages uh, CL user. Can we do this? This is such ugly code, but it'll if it does the job. It's one of those, I'll clean it up one day, but I have no reason to. I'm the only one using it. Um, oh no, now we need to go and profile again. SB profile reset. Play a frame and report. That seemed to report less than ever. Um, yeah. It's uh, profile 100 frames. See if something comes up. It doesn't seem to have profiled the uh, CL user commands though. Oh wait, now we're getting, oh no, 300 again from different places. Viewport, oh, wait a second. Update REPL link, that makes sense that that would be allocating a bit. Viewport resolution. Oh yeah, that's definitely allocating. Fuck that then. And where's that used? Probably all over the place. Uh, play with verts. Yes, of course, we're using that. Um, let's see how we're using it here. Projection. Yeah, when it's producing the uh, perspective, projecting perspective thing. We're being lazy and just getting the whole viewport there. So that accounts for a bit. Doesn't account for 500k a frame though. Um, again, look, we're, we're at 50 meg here and we're talking about one meg down here. This is, oh, sorry, 300k down here. Most of the stuff we're interested in isn't here. Um,
No. On profile or capital, profile or capital. Can we do CL? Oops, should switch that down here. Ah, well, that's thinking about it for a lot longer, which suggests that we're actually getting uh, a lot more functions now. <laughs> Profiling and optimizing would make a great episode. For sure, actually. That would be um, leak hunting, stuff like this. Yeah. It, I don't have any really solid ways of doing it. I generally, like... Like, actually, kind of what we're doing now. I throw I throw a profile at it, and I throw... Oh, wow. Did I crash something? Not yet. Probably shouldn't have asked it to profile everything in CL. Um, let's see if it completes in the next couple of minutes. Otherwise, I'm... Yeah, we'll, we'll just call it a night. Because we, we, we've gone over slightly. Um, it's worth another minute, though, if we can just get it to do this. But yeah, generally the process is I throw a profile at it. I try and see if there's anything obvious there. I throw SB profile at it, <laughs> at the problem, and see what comes up there. I've got my janky profiler, um, which does a bunch of stuff. Um, really the only, the, the main differences there are um, all, all over the place in, in Keppel. Um, if we just look, where is it? Uh, that's a good place to Check, I don't know, GPU buffers. Yeah, you'll see everywhere I've got defund plus instead of defund, just everywhere. And um, the reason for this is I have some, I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I've, I've got some, um, it allows me to inject some code at the head and the tail of every function um, to do profiling and not all of these are profile profiled, but let's see where um where, profile yeah profile t um so any so it allows me to use this extra declaration called profile t and that puts a call at the beginning and the end of the function it does a bunch of stuff actually it takes the function name it gives it an a, a an integer name um, and then at the start of the function, it writes two, um, currently two longs, um, to a, a CFFI um, block of memory, like malloc's up block of memory. It writes um, the current time in the microseconds, which is coming from another C function that I'm calling. Um, I think the one from uh, the timer function from SDL. Um, and then it, it writes in the number that represents this name. Um, and if the number is positive, it's the entrance to the function. If it's negative, it's the tail of the, it's the exit of the function. So head or tail of the function. Um, and so it writes, it mallocs up kind of meg or two meg buffers. And then it um, keeps those on the Keppel context, if I remember, or it might actually be storing it as just some global. Um, it grabs, uh, it grabs that memory, writes into it, and then just lets it go again. And once the two meg buffer's full, we kick it in a, um, in a channel over to another thread, which is just writing it out. So you get really big fat results, uh, but it's very detailed time-wise, um, which I really like. Uh, yeah, this is not happening. So I'm guessing I broke it or it's just taking a very long time. I don't think you're meant to profile all those functions. So, meh. But anyway, that's enough for today. Um, we should we should do more, more of this next week. Um, we might do some profiling stuff. It's probably a bit more fun. I do something visual as well. But thank you uh, so much for hanging out with me. Thanks to um, Mfiano and... Um, and um, Suska Jose for... Uh, suggesting this stream it was really good fun um and yeah if any of you have ideas ping me them and we'll do them another time thanks for watching bye